Look at this guy. This is the new improved big brother to the shark pencil case. This is the shark backpack. And on this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to make him. Hi, I'm Emma from Studio 77. If you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me. This video, I'm gonna take you through step-by-step step how to sew this guy. There's loads of features. So this is a new improved version. Like I say, we've got the side gussets to stop the biggest comment that we had about the free pattern was that there was bunching around the sides of the mouth. So I've taken that out with the side gussets. There are some hidden strap connectors on the back, so we're gonna learn how to do those. We've got the back zipper pocket, which works as a kind of security pocket as well, because that's against your back. On the inside, we have another zipper pocket. We have pen slots. We've got a slip pocket as well. And he's a really fun make. You can mix up the fabrics, do it all as the same. You want to think about using cotton or cotton canvas for this, unless you are a little bit more into your bag making, in which case go ahead with the faux leather. I'm using faux leather on this tutorial, so I'm gonna point out any tips or tricks as we go along, as I think of them. In the description below, you're going to find timestamps, you're going to find links to all of the products that I talk about. You're also going to find a link to another video that I have done on how I cut and interface this shark for this project with the faux leather. So if you want to have any tips for that, please do find that below. If you have any comments, questions or queries, as we go along please do pop them below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. This pattern was originally part of the 77 Club if you're interested in finding out more about that you can find that in the description too. I think that's everything let's get into it. Okay so once you've downloaded all your pattern pieces you're then going to want to make sure you're interfacing as per the instructions. So you want to make sure you are cutting out your fusible fleece for the dorsal fin and interfacing it. The tail fin the side gussets, the two front of body pieces, the side fins, going to want to reverse that, and also the back of body piece too. You're going to want to prep up all the different pieces you're going to need too. So I've got everything cut out and labelled. You do get these labels within the pattern as well. You're also going to want to prep up your zippers. So we've got a longer one for the mouth. We've got a shorter one for the back. I've used both size five for those. And I am using a size three for the inside zipper, but you could use a size five as well. You're also going to want to cut out your webbing and fuse the ends. These are lighter to do that just to seal the edges of the webbing so it's ready to use. So I've got my two longer straps and I've got my two shorter straps. You're also going to want to do that if you're using continuous zipper tape, just fuse the edges of each just to seal them and you can also baste over the edges too if you want to. You're also going to need two one inch sliders. I am using specific backpack ones for this, just because I found that if you don't, sometimes they can slip and you want to make sure that this is really secure on your back. I'm going to be using a 90 Microtex needle and all my regular supplies like a friction pen, um, scissors, clips and pins, and of course my beloved um, double-sided sewing tape. Always use Quiltos tape, don't be tempted to use regular double-sided. So let's get sewing. So we're gonna start off with our pen slots, okay, which is pattern piece six. And we want to have that interfaced with non-woven. We're gonna fold that in half, right sides together. And then we're gonna sew along the left side, all the way along the top, and then down on the right side, but we're gonna leave a gap of around four inches on that right side. And we're sewing this with a one centimeter or three eighths of an inch seam allowance. Then we're gonna clip the corners. And we're gonna turn it through the right way. Press that out making sure that all the seams are really nice and crisp. Then we're going to top stitch along that top folded edge, not the one with the seam, and we're going to top stitch a couple of millimetres from the edge. And when I'm top stitching I'm going to use a slightly longer stitch of three and a half. Then 
I'm going to grab the back of body, which is pattern piece one, and I'm going to lay it right sides up and I'm going to lay the pen slots on top. And you're going to need your pattern piece for this, or you can also measure. The measurements are in the pattern listed. And you're going to want to just lay your pattern piece on top. And you'll see that there are two notch lines. Okay, so we're going to mark those on. Use chalk or friction pen, just so that I know where they are. And then we're going to lay the pen slots so that they, the bottom of it matches up with that notch line. But before I do that, I'm just going to quickly fold it in half so that I know where that midline is. And I'm going to fold my pen slots in half and I'm going to match that up. And we are making sure that it's the bottom with the seam, not with the top stitching. The top stitching goes at the top of the piece and the seam goes on that notch line. I'm going to grab some pins. And then I'm going to take it over to the machine and I'm going to top stitch along the right edge, along the bottom and up the left edge, not along that top edge. Then we're going to mark along three centimetre lines, okay? So we're going to mark two lines in the middle and that is for our pen slots. Because I'm using dark fabric, I'm going to be using chalk on this. Then we're going to stitch those lines in place. Now when you're stitching these you want to make sure that you go backwards and forwards at the beginning and at the end. This is going to get a lot of wear and tear on these pen slots so you want to make it really secure. Moving along we're going to work on the slip pocket. So for that we're going to need pattern piece 8 and we're going to pop this piece to one side. So with pattern piece 8 you want to place it right sides together. And we're going to sew along that bottom edge again with a one centimetre or three eighths of an inch seam out. And we're going to turn that the right way out. And we're going to give that a little press as well. And just like we did on the pen slots, we're then going to top stitch along that top fold. And we're going to grab the piece we made earlier, pattern piece one, and we're going to lay our pocket piece on top. Now remember that notch line that we drew before? You want to match the slip pocket up with that notch line so that that bottom fold is matched up. The bottom seam, I should say, is matched up with that notch and the top folded edge is aligned with the top of the shark. Then we're going to baste within each seam allowance and we're going to stitch along the bottom. Now, when we're basting along the seam allowance, we want to remember that these are quarter inch seam allowance on these seams, okay? So you want to keep them nicely out of those seams. And you can use a longer stitch if you want to, and then go with a shorter stitch along the bottom, and then a long stitch up the other side. Okay, then we're going to move along to the outside zipper pocket. So we're going to put that to one side and we're going to grab our pattern piece one, which is the back of body, and this is our outer piece. You're also going to need your pattern piece for pattern piece one, but again, the measurements are on the pattern as well, in case you have cut out with the projector file. And we're also going to, of course, need pattern piece 10, which is the front and back of the outside pocket. So there's two of those. Put one to one side. So we're going to lay pattern piece 10 right sides down, so it's right sides together, on top of the pattern piece 1 outer. So we're going to lay it so that it is 6 centimetres down and in the middle. Next we're going to lay our pattern piece on top and to find the middle I'm going to again fold that pattern piece 10 so that I've got a crease and I'm going to 
lay my pattern piece on, my pattern piece one, so that I can see the middle and line the two up. And then it's going to be six centimetres down from that top edge. Just to keep that together for a few minutes, I'm just going to quickly fold and pop a little clip in there. Because I'm using faux leather, if I was using cotton, I'd put a couple of pins in. But that's how I'm going to do it so that it's in place just while I draw out these marks because then I'm going you see I've cut out the zipper hole and I'm going to draw through with a friction pen so that I know where to stitch. Again the measurements for this are within the pattern too. If it's slightly off it's not the end of the world um, that's going to be fine because it's on the inside and you won't see the seam allowance. Then I'm going to stitch it on the machine with our regular two and a half stitch length and we're going to stitch exactly over that rectangle. When it comes to the corners, I like to just reduce my stitch down to a two. If I'm using a regular quilting cotton or canvas, I'm gonna do it down to around a 1.7 to get around those corners, to get it really nice and crisp. And then I'm going to, after about an inch, I'm going to make my stitch length longer back to two and a half. Now normally with faux leather or cork we use a longer stitch throughout but for the zipper facings like this I'm going to use it slightly shorter. Now I'm going to take those clips off because I don't want to keep clips on faux leather for too long and we are going to cut that hole out okay so I'm going to cut along the middle and then I'm going to cut into each corner kind of like a fork so I'm cutting through all the layers and I'm cutting that fork into the edges but I'm being very careful not to snip the stitches you want to get it as close as you can without snipping the stitches that piece through to the back. Now what you can do as well is you can cut away some of that fusible fleece otherwise it can be quite bulky and it's not going to want to sit as nicely. So to do that you're just going to cut on an angle making sure you're only cutting away within that seam allowance, not snipping your stitches and you're going to just trim off that excess. be afraid to give it a little bit of a wiggle to get those fibres to go exactly how you want them to lay as well. And then we're going to give it a little bit of a press to try and keep that in place. Now if you're using cotton it's going to be a lot easier to keep this nice and crisp and you can give it a bit of a steam press as well but obviously because I'm using faux leather I can't be quite so heavy with the ironing but we can still press it a little bit and try and keep it a little bit in place. Then we're going to want to grab our medium zip, the one for the outer pocket and we are going to want to place it behind that hole that we've just made. And this is where our double sided tape really comes into its own. So I'm going to place some double sided tape along the zipper on both sides. I think I might have made <laughs> made it quite hard for myself on this one because I know that the, the double sided tape doesn't like to stick quite as much to these metallic zippers so we'll have to see how we go a little bit but using a regular zipper you will find that it sticks no problem. So we're going to take off the backing and we're going to attach it to that zipper hole. And we want to have it so that the zipper opening is at the top of the shark. When I place the piece on, the zipper hole on, I just like to make sure that the seam allowance, the 
underneath piece is pulled back out of the way and you're going to want to line up the raw edge of the zipper with the edge of that zipper pocket. This can be a bit fiddly but you can kind of lift it up and replace it down with this double sided until you get it how you want it to lie. Sometimes it's easier to do it from the front, sometimes from the back. Okay, so now I'm happy with how that is sitting. I'm then gonna take that over to the machine and we're gonna top stitch all the way around with a three and a half stitch length. Okay, so then we want to lay our other pocket piece on top, pattern piece 10. We're going to lay that right sides down. And um, as you can see, I've kind of pushed my seam allowance on there up a bit. So I'm not sure what I've done there, but that's going to be totally fine because it is the seam allowance no one is going to see. So I'm going to pin that in place. I recommend you change to a zipper foot for this bit, it just makes it a lot easier to get around. And then we're going to stitch from the pocket side up. So I'm going to move my pattern piece one out of the way and we're going to leave a turning gap at the bottom. Okay, so I'm just stitching about an inch each side and we are using our one centimeter seam allowance. Then we're going to put that pattern piece to one side, that back panel. And we're going to take a pattern piece 12 and pattern piece 13, which is the front lining and the pocket lining. And we're going to do the same as we did on the outside pocket, but we're going to do this for the inside pocket. So we're going to make sure these are centered. So I'm going to fold that in half again, fold that one in half. right sides together and this time is five and a half centimeters down now I can use pins on this one which is fantastic and again we're going to use our pattern piece 12 I'm going to lay that on just like we did before we do have the measurements in the pattern if you want to follow those instead and I'm just going to make my marks on there. You can either draw the whole rectangle like I did before, or you can just make the marks and use a ruler. The ruler is always going to be more accurate. As you can see, mine was not quite perfectly aligned, but that's fine. 
and then going to stitch that just like we did before using a two and a half stitch length. Again, I'm going to cut through that middle and into each corner, cutting through all the layers. Just like I did before, I'm going to push that through to the other side and press it in place. I'm going to grab my zipper and pop the double sided on. I'm just going to trim that down a little bit first because mine is really long because it's a shop bought one. I have got the metal stopper on the ends so I'm just going to chop that off, make sure that those are well out of the way of my sewing. We're going to top stitch around that zipper. Then we're going to turn the piece over and we're going to fold up that pocket piece so that the two short edges are lined up. I'm going to pop some pins in and then we're going to stitch those three sides to close the pocket. Okay, we're going to move that to one side and we're going to work on the strap connectors, which is pattern piece seven. And we've got four of those, of course, two are mirrored. So we're going to put one to one side, one set to one side, and we're going to work on the other set. We're going to grab, it doesn't matter which one, we're going to grab one of them with the right side facing up, and we're going to place one of these short pieces of webbing on top. And you want to make sure that there's an overhang over the top. And this overhang needs to be four centimetres, and the webbing needs to be centred in the middle of pattern piece seven. Then we're going to baste within the seam allowance along that top edge. Then we're going to place the other corresponding piece on top. I'm going to clip that in place. I'm going to stitch those three edges. So up that curve, along the top, and then down the other side and we're keeping the bottom seam open and we're using a one centimeter or three eighths of an inch seam allowance. Now when you're stitching you want to make sure you don't catch that webbing so you can feel it with your finger either side of the webbing so just make sure you've got your seam allowance correct and you're going along and making sure you're catching in that webbing. Then we're going to cut off the corners, snip the corners, but make sure you don't cut it into the webbing. So you can just push the webbing out of the way each side and clip the corners. And we're going to turn the whole thing the right way out. And we're going to snip off that little end there. We don't need that. And then we're going to top stitch around those three edges, leaving again that bottom edge open. And we're going to do the same with the other short strap and the other two pieces of pattern piece seven, the strap connectors. Once they're done, we're then going to put them to one side and we're going to start the work on the fins. And we're going to start with the dorsal fin. 
So we've got the two corresponding pieces. We want to place them right sides together and clip in place. And we're going to stitch around the two edges. We're going to leave that bottom edge open. And we're going to do the same on all of the other pieces. So we've got the two side fins and we've got the tail fin, leaving open that straight edge. And on all these pieces, there is a one centimeter or three eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, once that's stitched, we then need to snip into those curves to help it turn. So I'm going to use pinking shears, but you could also cut little triangles if you want to as well. Then we're going to turn it the right way out. And we're going to top stitch around that curve, leaving again that bottom edge open. You really want to use a Teflon foot or preferably a walking foot for this so that it doesn't stick if you're using faux leather. So we're going to repeat that with all the different fins. So you've got the two side fins and you've got the tail fin. Once they're all done, we're going to put them to one side. We're going to grab our dorsal fin and you want to make sure you don't use the side fins. The dorsal fin is slightly fatter and shorter. Okay, so we're going to lay that right sides together onto one of the pattern piece two. I'm only choosing this one because that's how it is in the instructions to keep it the same. And we want to make sure we have our pattern piece and we can measure down. It's 12 centimeters or you can use those notches as marked on the pattern piece to know where to lay it. And we want to base that in place within the seam allowance. And the seam allowance on this seam is one centimeter or three eighths of an inch. So about half a centimeter from the edge. Also, while I'm here, I'm just going to mark on those other notches to make sure I've got them for when I need them later. Okay, now we want to grab our side fins and we want to base those on as well. So you want to make sure you've got that longer curve facing the top of the shark and we're going to match up with the notch marks. Now it's not the top notch mark, that's where the zipper ends, it's the next two further down. So you want to make sure you're not putting it on that notch mark and we're going to clip it in place. And of course we've got one on each side, so we're going to prep the other one as well. Again, not on that top notch, we're going to the one further down, or the two further down, there's one either side. And we're going to base that within the seam allowance, which for this seam is a quarter of an inch, so about an eighth of an inch from the edge. Okay, now we're going to do that middle seam of the shark. So we're going to place the two pattern piece ones right side together and we're going to clip and stitch along that seam and that's a one centimeter or three eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, once that's stitched, we're then going to put that to one side. we're going to attach our strap connectors. So this is going to be on the back of the shark, the one with the zipper that we put in earlier. And we want to grab our two pattern piece nines, which is the hidden strap connectors. And you're gonna need your pattern piece as well, pattern piece one. So you want to lay that over the top and you're gonna line up where you have your zipper pocket and the top and the bottom of the 
pattern piece and you want to find those two top notches and you're going to lay your strap connector so that it is right sides down and it's within those two notches. We want to find the middle of the strap connector by folding in half and I've just folded it in half to find that crease and then you can also draw the line on to find that really easily. We want to line up that fold with the top of that rectangle. So that fold is along the top of the rectangle and we're going to clip it in place. If you're not using faux leather or vinyl, you can of course pin it in place. It's going to be slightly easier. And we're going to draw through that rectangle onto the hidden strap connector piece, pattern piece nine. You want to make sure the zip is open so it's well out of the way and then we're going to stitch that rectangle in place. Now you want to use a slightly smaller stitch than you would normally for faux leather. You want it to be quite a crisp rectangle. So we're going to then cut into that rectangle just like we did before with the zipper pocket. So we've got the fork at each end and the line down the middle. And we're going through all the layers here and being careful not to snip into those stitches. I'm going to push that outer piece through to the back just like you would with a zipper facing and if you've got cotton you can press it otherwise just give it a bit of a wiggle and then we're going to push that longer piece down so that it is right side of the strap connector to the wrong side of that panel and then we can put the longer strap into that hole and we want to have about four centimeters excess on the back. You can stitch that in place if you want to um, to those facings of the strap connectors. You can stitch along there to keep that in place. Then we're going to turn it over and we're going to stitch around that hole using our top stitch. We're going to make sure we don't catch the webbing. So we're going to pull that out the way and make it really secure. Now you may find that you need a hump jumper when you come to do this because it can be a little bulky, especially if you're using faux leather like I am, but you just want to sew, sew around that rectangle. I've pulled the threads through here and knotted it in place and then like I say you can stitch across there if you want to. We're going to pop a rivet in so I'm not going to stitch that but you could do that and that would make it more secure if you weren't using a rivet. So I'm going to repeat that on the other side. Okay, then when that's done, we're going to pop in our rivet. So I've cut out some little scraps of Decaville light here and I'm going to fuse those to the back just to give it a bit more stability, a bit more structure, just makes it really strong. So I'm fusing that in between the strap connector pieces and I'm going to do that on all the places that I want to have my rivets. Obviously be really careful that you don't touch the iron onto the webbing or onto the faux leather because it will melt both. And then as I am adding in rivets, I'm just going to pop a mark for where I want my rivet to go on the two top strap connectors. Just making sure I've measured that correctly. And I'm also going to do that on the bottom strap connector. So I'm going to place some more of that, those Decaville scraps inside and make sure that that's really strong as well. And then I'm going to mark the holes that I want to do with my gel pen. If I was using cotton, I'd probably use a, a friction pen or a chalk pen. And then we're going to place the rivets on. And 
now that those rivets are in place we're then going to attach our buckles or our sliders to the bottom straps now it's really important that you do these mirrored if well it depends on the buckle that you're using i'm using one which is kind of directional so you want to make sure that you've mirrored those straps so that then when you put the backpack on it kind of works out different sliders work in different ways but if yours looks like this then you do need to pay attention to which way up they are so we're going to place it over that middle bar and we're going to overlap it by about an inch and we're going to do that on both and then we're going to stitch that in place to keep the slider in place. Like I say, I'm just laying this out to make sure that I've got my buckles going in the right direction. For me, that kind of rounded part of the buckle needs to be facing down when it's laying like that. So we clip them both on and then we're going to take them to the machine and we're going to stitch a barn door to keep those in place. And a barn door is a rectangle or a square with a cross in it and it's the strongest way to attach straps. Okay, with those stitched we then want to make sure that our marks are copied over from the pattern onto the back panel and that is going to show us exactly where to put our strap connectors. I'm going to lay those right sides together and we're going to lay them just as it shows with them sort of pointing diagonally up towards the top of the shark. And then we're going to base them within the seam allowance and remember this seam allowance is a quarter of an inch so you're going to want to be stitching about an eighth of an inch from the edge okay so we're going to put that to one side and now we're going to work on the side gussets and the main kind of mouth zipper so you want to grab the pattern piece 11s and you're going to have two lining pieces and you're going to have two outer pieces and then of course we want our main zipper so you want to make sure you've got the outer pieces. I'm going to place one against a short edge of the zipper. Now you might want to make sure that your zipper edges are fused and or basted as well. And then we're going to clip that in place and we're going to baste within the seam allowance along that short edge. Then we're going to turn it over. So we've got the back of the zipper and we're going to place our lining on top and that is right sides down to the back of the zipper and we're going to stitch that with a one centimeter or three eighths of an inch seam allowance. And we're going to open it up and this bit is optional but it does look quite nice. We're then going to stitch, top stitch and we're going to pull the lining out of the way so you're stitching through the outer fabric, the zipper and the seam allowance only and you're starting and stopping one centimetre from each edge. On that end we're going to do the same on the other end. So you're basting on the outer fabric then turning it over and stitching on the lining to make the correct seam allowance which is one centimetre and then we're going to top stitch starting and stopping one centimeter or three eighths of an inch from each edge. Okay, now we're going to grab the front of the shark that we stitched earlier and we're gonna find the middle of our zipper. So I'm just gonna fold it in half and I'm gonna mark on the zip tape where the middle is. And then we're gonna attach it to the shark. So you want to place the zipper right size down on top of the front of the shark we're matching up the middle of the zipper with that middle seam line. I'm going to clip it in place and if you're using cotton here you could press that seam open of course we're using faux leather or vinyl so we can't do that. 
And then I'm gonna use my good old double-sided tape that I love for zippers. And we're gonna place that within the seam allowance along that edge. Now this is a quarter of an inch seam allowance, so you wanna make sure that that is in, in that edge. You don't need to put the double-sided all the way down, but you wanna make sure that it goes past that notch, which is lining up with the seam where the zipper meets the gusset. I'm snipping into the zipper here because we are going around a curve and we want to make sure that that zipper lays nice and flat. We follow it through and make sure that that notch line is matching up where the seam changes from the gusset to the zipper and we're following that outer fabric all the way along moving the lining out of the way because we're not going to be catching the lining of the gusset as we stitch this. Okay so we're going to stitch that all the way around but what you want to do is when you get to that seam change where the lining is you want to pull that out the way and you want to stop and start so that you don't catch it as you sew and i'm switching over to a zipper foot because it makes it a little bit easier for this you may need to use a hump jumper as well depending on your machine and if you're using faux leather or vinyl and we're stopping at that seam flipping the lining over and we're carrying on and stitching around the top of the zipper. I'm just opening that seam allowance out underneath as I go past that central seam and stopping just where that gusset meets. And then I'm gonna flip that lining out of the way and I'm gonna start again. You wanna make sure that your stitches are as close together so you may need a hump jumper on that bit, like I say. And this is a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And then we're going to attach our lining. So we're gonna add on the double-sided tape all the way around that top edge from the notch point to the notch point at least. And we're gonna place that right sides together. So we're gonna lay that on the top and we're gonna match up the middle notch with that middle seam. That's our starting point. I'm gonna place some clips in there. And then just like we did before, except this time we are attaching the lining to the lining. So I'm just going to use some pins on that bottom bit to attach that because it's a bit nicer to sew with pins on cotton. And once that one side is clipped and pinned, we're then gonna move back to the other side and do the same. Wanna make sure again that the notch line is matching up where that seam changes with the gusset to the zipper and we're gonna pin along. Then just like we did before, we are going to stitch around that seam and we're gonna stop and start where the zipper starts. So you want to make sure you're flipping that out the way so that you don't catch the outer gusset and we're going to go around the top of the zipper and then we're going to flip the lining or the outer gusset out the way and we're going to stitch the rest of the lining and this again is a quarter of an inch seam allowance Okay, once that's sewn, we're then gonna take it off the machine and we can push the mouth out or the zipper out and then we can top stitch around that top edge. You're gonna find it a lot easier if you open the zipper as we do this. You wanna make sure that all of the seam allowance is pushed out. You may want to clip into the seam allowance at this stage as well or just before you turn it out. 
This is also a good time to insert the eyes. I am using 10 millimeter safety eyes, toy safety eyes, but you can use snaps or applique the eyes on. There's loads of different ways you can do this. If you're looking for different ideas for this shark, there's also a shark hacks video. I'll pop that with a link in the description below. That's for the shark pencil case, but it will give you ideas for this one too. So I'm going to mark on the eyes and I suggest that you're, you put your eyes four centimetres apart from the middle seam. So it's six centimetres up from that mouth seam line, the zipper seam line, and then they're four centimetres apart from that middle seam. But again, you can do it exactly how you want. Now for the these eyes, and you want to be careful to do this if you're giving this to a young child but I actually cut off the end as you can see me doing there of the safety eye just to make it lie a bit flatter against the seam so I put the safety cap on and then I use pliers to chop off the end and file it with some sandpaper be super careful of that if you're doing that you should wear goggles because it can ping off <laughs> Okay, then we're going to top stitch around the mouth on the zipper that we've stitched. So I'm doing a three and a half stitch length to go around that curve. And I am using my walking foot, as you can see, it does make it a lot easier. Just go slow and steady. I know obviously this is sped up, but take your time and get that really looking nice. And you can match it up when you get to the bottom to that stitch line if you did the top stitching earlier on that side. Okay, then I am going to feed the straps all into that zipper pocket that just keeps it really nicely out of the way on that back panel because otherwise they can get caught and it's just a good idea to tuck them out of the way. So I've put them in the zipper and then on the inside, if we turn it over, I'm going to pop them all back inside because we've got that pocket opening for later, it's our birthing um, hole. And we are going to just pop a pin in there just to keep it nice and secure and stop it getting in the way. Then we're gonna grab our pattern piece, we're gonna lay it over and we're just gonna mark on those notches just like we did before, just to make sure we know where we're attaching the side gussets to. Okay, so then we're going to put our double sided on because we are going to be attaching the top of the back panel to the other side of the zipper. And so I've put the double sided on again, same as we did on the front, we're repeating those steps. So we're just doing the double sided quilters tape along from notch to notch. We're matching up the middle of the zipper on the other side with the middle of that back panel. Right sides together. going to match up the notch where the side seam changes just like we did before and we're going to match up the outer pieces all the way along again we're going to make sure the lining is out of the way when we sew so we're going to stop and start at that gusset edge Okay, so now we're going to attach the back lining. Just like we did with the front, we're putting on our double-sided tape and then we're going to match it up the middle notch with the middle of the back panel 
and the middle line on that zipper. Pin it all around and we're attaching the lining to the lining. There is just one small difference when we do this side of the lining. We want to make sure that we leave a turning gap in the middle of one side. So I'm placing in some big pins so that I remember when I'm sewing it that there is a turning gap there so hopefully I don't sew over it and I'm going to stop and start again. There's the big pins there and I'm going to stop and start again at that gusset point. Then we need to add in our tail fin. So we're going to add it in that opening at the bottom and you want to make sure that you've got the top of the fin facing the front of the bag. Okay so this at the moment is uh, the back of the bag facing up. Now I've got the front of the bag facing up because we've got that zipper pocket in the lining and we can see our eyes as well. And this is marked on the pattern which way up is the tail and you want to place it inside so the tail is facing inside not outside like I originally just did and we're going to fold the that kind of short seam so that all the seams are matching so the side gusset is me matching the side gusset and as we stitch we're going to open up those seams and we're going to stitch it in place with a one centimeter or three eighths of an inch seam allowance. Now unfortunately this next bit didn't film in the original fabric that I was making the video for so that's why my nails have changed and the fabric's different but I still wanted to show you. You need to then do the same with the lining okay so the same with the bottom of the lining you're going to match up those seams and going to sew that closed with a one centimeter or three eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay back to the original video you can see the bottom is, isn't stitched up here but just ignore that for a second you need to put your hand through the side hole of the lining. If you did put a pin in to stop the webbing coming out take that out and then we're going to berth the bag. We have to pull it all the way out. Make sure everything's lying really nicely and then we can top stitch around the bottom of the mouth. It's a little bit of a tug to get under the machine but it's doable, you just have to sort of push and pull to get it under there and then we're going to top stitch that with a three and a half stitch length. Your machine may be different but that's what is a good top stitch on my machine. You're going to make sure you're pulling away all those webbings, don't want to get any of those straps caught as you do this. Okay then you're going to reach through that back pocket and you're going to pull out the lining, the birthing hole. Okay you're going to pull it clear out of the pocket and we're going to stitch that closed. And this is a quarter inch seam allowance on this seam. Okay, once that's stitched, we're then going to pull out the actual zipper pocket and we're going to turn the seam allowance in. You can press it if you want to first and we're going to machine or hand stitch that closed. Okay, once that's stitched up, then all we have to do is going to 
pop that zipper pocket back inside, make sure he's lying all really nicely. And then we're going to thread those straps into the sliders or the rucksack buckles. I'm going to thread them through. You can also fold over the bottom by an inch and stitch them in place for a bit of extra security. And he's finished. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you've loved this tutorial. Do check out the shark hacks video that's coming up on the screen right now and I'll see you there.